Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Welcome to this demonstration of Dialogue System. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually an RPG engine that I've been building while Twitch streaming. So if you guys are interested in watching this being built, come and join us on Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash RM2K Dev. Anyway, the purpose and premise behind this engine is to build something similar and compatible to RPG Maker within Game Maker. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because Game Maker has fantastic export options for Windows, Mac OS 10, HTML5, iPhone, Android, Windows 8, Windows Phone 8, Ubuntu, Linux, Tizen, um, all these different platforms, their own inbuilt Game Maker player, and RPG Maker, it only exports to one platform, Windows, and even then it does that a little bit dodgy, a little bit shonkily, you know, you've got to download these massive 200 megabyte, um, packs with resources and all sorts of crap in them. Anyway, getting off point. So, I've been working on this on Twitch. We have the game up and running. It does run completely resolution independent, so it does not matter what resolution you run the game at. It will adjust itself and compensate. We have a menu system working. We have a window system working. We have a dialogue system that works. We have RPG Maker style switches that work amazingly. We have RPG style variables that work amazingly. We have um, aspect ratio zooming. We've got this title screen that works. We have our character controller, which works. I'm about to show you all of this stuff. We also have a really detailed debug system. So you can see as I try to make an action on this continue button, it pops messages onto the stack on the left side of the screen that says save states not implemented yet. So let's start the game real quick. Now, please forget about the graphics right now. It doesn't really matter. It's compatible with RPG Maker sprites. So I just pulled the sprite in from RPG Maker and it works. The rest of these graphics are just debug graphics. So as of right now, we have full um, four direction movement with scrolling uh, pixel perfect collision. So at the moment, it will not let you move into these collidable blocks. The other thing which I've also set up is the ability to be colliding with something, but change your facing direction, which is something that not a lot of engines or people do when they're making their own sort of RPGs and game makers. So if I move to the left, move to the right, move up, I can change the direction that I'm facing, which also changes the direction that I'm targeting, which means that I can interact with these three tiles surrounding me without physically having to move onto them. I can also move up and down, obviously. We've also got that little target, which is the one that's in front of my player. So if I put this target onto, say for instance, this sign and press the action button, you'll see that we get a dialogue pop-up. Now this dialogue says RM2K Dev, okay, this is RM2K Dev. Forget about what it says. It's just some test dialogue. We can also progress through the dialogue and it shows you that you have two fruits. Um, also in doing that, what you see I've done is I've started a quest. Sign one test quest is on. These are RPG Maker style switches. So you can actually program events in the game. Now this sign, I'm supposed to be able to walk on this sign by the way. Um, but you can actually program games like you were doing in RPG Maker with switches and variables and things like that. Now if I speak with this sign, you'll see at the top left hand side here, I'm just throwing a message onto the debug stack that says the quest is real. If I speak with this sign again, power through the dialogue, you'll see that the sign one test quest has been turned off. That's happened using a toggle function. And then if I speak to this, it says the quest is not real. This is just some debug stuff for now, but you get the idea that the switches system and the concept of switches is working fantastically. The other thing we've got are triggers. So this thing here in front of me is a floor trap. If I stand on this, it will say the floor trap event was triggered. If I move off of it, nothing happens. If I move onto it again, we trigger the event again. Now, if I try to speak with this by using the action button, you'll see that no event happens. This is just because this type of event is a trigger event. So this type of event we're speaking with the sign here is an action event and the type of event where you're standing on something is a trigger event. The other type of event that we have is an action or trigger event. So you can either stand on it, you see it says um, floor trap event was triggered AOT, which is action or um, touch or trigger. Um, I could also speak with that using the, using the action button and I'm going to get the message appear on the screen. So the actual engine itself is coming along quite well. The other thing that we've got is this generic window concept. Now you see the window appearing here, which is what we're using for um, displaying the text, but this is also the same window that appears when you start the game. So if I start the game up, you'll see that I get this little window here, which is the menu system that I can 
select to continue the game, start a new game, or quit the game with. Um, so that is how the uh, menu system works. Now, the other cool thing about this being in Game Maker is that we we've been building this on Twitch and we've been going through the process of debugging it with HTML5. So this game engine, hopefully when it releases or launches sometime in the future, I don't know when, I don't have dates, um, but it will eventually one day release, I hope. Um, when it does, will work perfectly in HTML5. So you can see we've got the game running, it's like new game, the character is moving around, we're running at 60 frames per second, collisions working fine as long as well as uh, facing directions, as well as interactions with objects. which you can see RM2K dev, okay, RM2K dev, the message, blah, 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 blah. Skip through that. There we go. Skip through that, sorry. Um, and then speak with this one. Nothing happens because we don't need anything to happen with that one because the test is test is off. Um, speak with this one. Floor trap events are working. Um, these uh, trigger or interaction events are working. So everything is working amazingly in HTML5. Now, one other cool thing that I'll show you is the game is completely resolution independent. This is going to work on mobiles. It's going to work on PCs, Macs, Linux, websites, so that you can make the game once and have it work everywhere. That is the goal with this project. But if I try to scale the game up, what you'll see is the game scales up and deals with it nicely. So the resolution is handled appropriately, as well as the messages, as well as the message system. If I were to scale this down, you'll see the message will assize itself appropriately. The other thing we have is if I... This is going to be a little bit hard to see, but I'll start the game again. And I'll shrink it right down. So let's go over here to this sign. I'm going to shrink the width right down so that there's not enough room on the screen for the message. Actually, I can make it a little bit taller. There we go, I'll shrink it down a little bit more. What you'll see happen is the dialogue window will actually scroll the message if it's too long for the screen. So it actually scrolls down on the screen. Uh, that message wasn't long enough for the screen, but it will respond. If the message is too long for the screen, you'll only see the end of it, but as it's displaying itself on the screen, you'll see more of it appear in there. Now, I'll show you some cool stuff with the messages really quickly. If you have a look at this, we have the RPGCK variable set functions. You're able to set variables like player name, sign test, fruit number, and you can perform, you know, arithmetic and, you know, other sorts of stuff on them as well. So if you want to do some basic math, you know, count fruits and things like that, which means that in our dialogue system, we also have the ability to interpolate those into the string. So you can say player name, oh, okay, this is player name. You can do it multiple times. It works amazingly. So that's pretty cool. The next thing I'll show you real quick is the ability to create windows on the fly. So say, for instance, um, you're working on a game. You've got, some, you've got some needs for your own custom windows, right? Um, if we take a look at my hero object, so I'll take a look at the parent hero object. In its, um, sorry, what am I doing? I'll just in, this, in the, I'll make a script inside my hero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set up a window. This is amazingly simple. Let's say, say for instance, you had like a menu that you wanted to build in your game that, that's not supported out of the engine, um, out of the, off the shelf. You can actually just create your own windows and it's extremely easy. So I'm going to say like, um, say I wanted to build like a party or an inventory on the side and then a party on the right or something like that. I can say party equals and then I can just use, I'm storing a reference to a window. RPGCK underscore window and the window functions will come up. Window create. Now these windows, they use percentages. So X percent, Y percent, width percent, height percent, and then some anchors. These anchors are used to determine where the window is anchored to the screen. So I'm going to show you how to use the left anchor. Say for instance, I wanted to do something at position zero, uh, Y position zero with 25% width of the screen, and then 100% height of the screen. It's going to be anchored to anchors. Sorry, I got my caps lock on then anchors.left and that's on the top that's on the x anchor and the y anchor is going to be anchors.left as well now if i run the game you'll see a window that is pegged to the top left hand corner of the screen by the top left hand corner of the window that occupies 25 percent of the screen real estate in the x direction and 100 percent in the y direction this will adjust itself appropriately no matter what resolution you're using or what size the game window is so if you're playing on a phone it will work if you're playing on a pc it'll work as well the other cool thing is here that I can create a window that's say 
as wide as the screen is, 33% as high as the screen is, but positioned 50% in the screen and 50% down the screen. So 50% X, 50% Y. Now this window is anchored to the left. So what you'll see is the top left hand corner of this window is in the center of the window, center of the screen. But if I wanted this window to be central in the actual game window, I can change the anchors from anchor.left to anchor.center. There we go. Now the window will be anchored from the center position of the window system, and you'll see the window opens perfectly in the center of the screen. This is cool in case you wanted to make your own windows. With this system though, it means that it's so easy to add your own windows. So if I change these back to left, change this one back to left, and we're going with the idea of doing a party system, right? So if this window occupies 25% of the width, then we can start this window at set at 25% of the width, sorry. The Y will be zero as well which means that our width percentage will be 75%, and then I'm gonna make the height also 75% so that we have a nice little bottom. Um, we have a, the right side window doesn't occupy the full screen. If I run this, you'll see that we have a very traditional style sort of RPG window. You've got the menu items on the left and then some party information on the right. As you can see, this is like so easy to just get up and running and it scales perfectly with all different resolutions. Doesn't matter what you're using. It will just work out of the box awesomely. There are some issues with um, certain resolutions being ab not able to divide sprites up quickly and properly, but we'll sort that out later. It's just coming along really well. So I'm going to get rid of that. I think I showed you the string interpolation on the sign, which is really cool. Um, so the string interpolation is an idea that comes from many modern languages where you can actually inject strings into into a sign. So say for instance you had a uh, a quest and you were increasing the number of fruits that you gathered when the player collided with them. You can do that with this system and then you can also increase the variable fruit number. Then inside of your uh, string you can say you have fruit number fruits and the system will support that. You can also place them in there multiple times. It's just really cool the way this is coming together. Um, and again the idea being uh, that this works cross-platform. Again, like I said, we're developing it for Windows and HTML5. Um, like I said, when I say we, I mean we're on Twitch Twitch streaming, so me and everyone there is developing this. It's really cool. Um, so come and join us. It's pretty fun. You guys might enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm learning things. Everyone in the stream is learning things. It's pretty cool. This debug system as well, I'll give you a quick brief rundown of this. This is awesome. We've got debug log, debug warn, and debug error. They come up in different colors, and you can also adjust the amount of time that the message spends on the screen. So say, for instance, you had uh, find tokens in string. We've got this function here, debug warn. Found token tells you what token it found. If I add a optional parameter to this, which is time, I can change the amount of frames that this will stay on the screen for. So I want it to stay on the screen for a 1,000 frames. Now, if I run the game and I speak with the sign, you'll see these orange messages, found token, found token, found token, found token, found token. Uh, what, what they are doesn't actually matter, but um, they will stay on the screen for a thousand frames, whereas other messages will disappear off the screen. So you can actually adjust the amount of time a message stays on the screen for whatever purpose you have. So these ones here, these input X and input Y ones, they stay on the screen for exactly one frame. That's why they update nicely when we move around. So yeah, the system itself is coming together so nicely. I'm really happy with the way this has come together. I'll probably be working on this again next weekend. If not, then throughout the week, obviously, after work and things like that. So if you think this is pretty cool, don't forget to give it a like. Um, when it's ready, I'll make it available on the Mac, not the Mac App Store, sorry, the um, Game Maker App Store not my app store, sorry, Game Maker Marketplace. That's where it'll be available. And yeah, if uh, if you have any feedback and suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Please leave comments in the, in the comment section because I want to know what people are thinking about this, what you'd like to see in it, what you dislike about it, what you like about it. Let me know everything that you know about this, that you want to know about. Any questions about it, please let me know. I want to make this engine as as good as it can be. So all the feedback is appreciated. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, you can catch me um, on twitch.tv forward slash rm2kdev where we'll be making this live. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.